There's two different things you have to understand for merit, and that's features of graphs and properties of functions. When we're talking about properties of functions, we're talking about things that, for example, if cubics is the function, that all cubics have in common. When we're talking about features of the graph, we're talking about specific graphs. For example, this graph here has x-intercepts of 3, 5, and 8, whereas if I move it, oh, I can't move it, um, this graph here is also a cubic, but it's got an intercept only at 14, for example. But both cubics have something in common. All cubics have rotational symmetry. Now, in order to show you this, I want you to see that this, when I do that, there's no rotational symmetry there, right? It's only got rotational symmetry order one. So what I'm going to try and do is move, try and work out where the center of rotation would be in a cubic. So if we do that, we're now getting that to 180 degrees. Can you see if I move my centre, oh I need it exactly 180, there we go, I'm going to move my centre of rotation until the thing maps onto each other. So here we go, can you see it's got rotational symmetry of degree 2 because it does a full turn it maps onto itself but with half a turn it also maps onto itself. So if I was to change this graph and for example change the 5 to a 6 and maybe change the k value to 0.5 I've got a different graph it's still a cubic and it would still have that rotational symmetry I need to find my 180 but of course I need to move my center of rotation don't I different graph so the center of rotation is actually the midpoint between the local maximum here and the local minimum there. So you can see it mapping onto itself at the 180. So the sort of comment that we want for merit is to say it's a cubic and all cubics have rotational symmetry. That kind of general statement is moving into the merit land. Okay?